what? I made part one to this video three years ago. Here I am, and here is a clip of me talking about Nosy Bonk. Just when you think he's in the past. Nosy Bonk, you're creepy. He also has like a big smile. I'm scared of Nosy Bonk. I will have nightmares for. Ever. So that is the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest kids show. This is the kind of chaos that you can expect for this video, and I feel like my voice was like a lot higher back then, but maybe that's just me. I feel like I'm sounding like me, 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 me. Maybe I still do. Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgay, and today we're talking the top 10 weirdest kids shows part two, the long awaited return. You know what to do by now. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you think is the weirdest. And also like this video, share it with a friend, stick around to the end. I'm gonna be reading comments. All right, coming in at number 10, we have Booba. What is actually happening here? Also, can we get a little look at the intro? Kids bouncing on the Great Wall of China? I don't understand, because to me, this is sinister. Booba was a British kids show that ran from 2003 to 2006 and was like a kind of weird version of Teletubbies on mushrooms. I think it was supposed to be some form of kids exercise show because kids love freaky yoga with weird big creatures. Booba. The Booba creatures live in a place called the Boo Zone and, well. <laughs> Dragons at number nine. My name is Gawain. How do you do? Gawain? Gawain the dragon? That's right, we have Through the Dragon's Eye. Ah, I remember this one from when I was a little lady. The premise, I believe, is a dragon mural at a kid's school and the playground comes to life and then the kids then follow him through a waterfall on an epic adventure to retrieve some kind of low-budget yellow octagons. I just love how much Gorwin the dragon clearly looks like a person in a very dubious costume. Let us go to the pool. Scott? I'm honestly dying. This is too funny. It's too funny. Also, can we just talk about Boris, Morris, and Doris? Their names are Doris, Boris, and Morris. I, I like actually can't. Also, why does the dragon sound so comically evil? This absolute gem was released in 1989 and had just 10 episodes. It was before my time, but I remember it being shown to me on VHS in school, and I mean, it's aged like a fine wine, hasn't it? This was doing the rounds on the internet a few years ago, and I think that we just need to remind ourselves of how weird and beautifully 80s this was. At number eight, we have Emu's Pink Windmill Kids. Oh, kids. This doesn't get old, I love it. To me, like skipping over that this show is co-hosted by an emu puppet, this is an absolute treat. What a blast from the past. This was first broadcast on Friday the 13th of July 1984. 84. Do you guys want to meet Abby? I think you do. I'm Anthony. I'm Debbie. And my name is Abby. This is so weird, but oh so great. What a treat. I wish I was part of their crew. And number seven, we have Peppermint Park. <laughs> Yeehaw! Not so bad, right? Oh, wait. That's a great idea. Right, it is a great idea. So we test these once a week, and we have a fire drill in our house once a week. Pig Boy with fingers and a clown. I mean, that is a scene from my worst nightmare. It's a pig, he's got a snout, but why has he not got hooves? Or what do pigs have? Trotters. Fingers. <laughs> Maybe when I grow up, I could be a fireman just like Sparky. Um, Peppermint 
Park was a kids TV show that ran for just a year between 1987 and 1988 and honestly to me it is somewhat hellish. It was a major flop and was cancelled after 6 episodes but it's left its mark, mostly in my brain. For example, I say hello Mr Yellow, you are a very happy fellow. And if the sun is shining bright, the yellow in the sun makes my day go right. Okay, I actually might love it. Dancing singing banana. What's not to love? Coming in at number 6 we have the land of the lost. I believe the presence of you and your family are the cause of my problem. Say it how it is mate. So The Land of the Lost was an American TV show from the 1970s and I mean I'm actually living for the aliens shiny orange poncho. It's freaky but it's fleeky. In the waterfall. The time doorway cannot be used for anything until this paradox is resolved. If you're wondering what the show is all about it is all summed up in this twinkly twankly banjo intro. Marshall, Will and Holly on a routine expedition. On a routine expedition. <laughs> what has a gal got to do to get on a routine expedition? I, I can't. Honestly the whole thing is absolutely mental. There's also some T-Rex drama and for me, aliens and dinosaurs in one show. It's never been done. Coming into number 5 we have Angela Anaconda. I remember this show from when I was little and honestly it is so hellish and not even less hellish today as a woman looking at it. Angela Anaconda is an absolute freak show, admittedly the clip I just showed you was from a Halloween episode but check this out it's regular scheduling. Thank you Angela and Johnny, that was certainly an interesting use of meat. Angela Anaconda aired between 1999 and 2001 and honestly I Anaconda don't want none. Ever. Hun. Coming in at number 4 we have Banania. Banania, Banania. <laughs> Honestly, like terrifying and weird, but also, am I alone in thinking that it's a little bit cute? Banania is a Japanese kid show about a cat banana that lives in a fruit bowl with its fellow cat banana friends. It is bat kitten crazy. It's also inspired whatever this is. Honestly, I need more information. If you're Japanese and you're watching this video, please give me more information. I have to know. One more time. Yes, I love it. Like they're singing about a cat banana and just giving it some. I think it might be a cult though. What if it's a cult? It is actually kind of cute, but like culty. Case in point here. Banana. Okay, things have got dark with banana, and honestly, in that last clip, I'm fascinated, but like, I really don't think it's okay. I'm keeping with creepy Asian kids shows for now because, well, it's the best kind of horror comedy. Coming into number 3 we have ha 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 No but actually though. Listen, I don't know what is happening and I'm not sure I want to, but I do know that this is sinister. Very, very, very sinister. We've all heard a lot on this list, we've seen a lot, but now all I can hear in my mind is ha 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 ha. Help me, help me, please help me. This is a call out for help. SOS. And also, I just want to tell you that it gets worse because they do the whole thing all over again amid the seven dwarves. What do you want, child bots? Tell me. Coming in at number 2 we have Jim Henson's The Storyteller. Yeah. 
Oh my god, yes, I love it. Jim Henson's kids TV show is all of my dark crystal dreams come true, but also many of my worst nightmares reimagined. So, let's hear it for Jim Henson though. I love him. Jim Henson's The Storyteller was a short kids series of 9 episodes and it even won a primetime Emmy. But I have to say it was weird. There was a big troll, a talking chicken, some kind of evil dragon bat thing. Honestly though, quick question. And one. My own, eh? Is that the guy from Jurassic Park? Clever girl. So the clips you are seeing from the storyteller are from the episode called The Soldier and Death. Each episode was a self-contained work of European folklore. I honestly really do need a 2019 screening of this, but it is definitely scary for kids. All right, coming straight in from your worst nightmares at number one, we have Mr. Blobby. Hello. Hi. Yes. Oh no, no, it's all right. No, 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 it's okay. Blobby, Blobby, no, 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 Blobby, no, Blobby. no, think nothing of it. You only had to ask. Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. No. Mr. Blobby was a character from Noel's House Party, which was an absolutely off the wall family show in the UK, and wasn't necessarily specifically just for kids. But Mr. Blobby was definitely aimed at children. I think. I don't know. What's going on with him? Mr. Blobby basically just communicates by saying the words Blobby a lot, which is also, you know, a lot. I really love this savage review of Mr. Blobby from Elizabeth Colbert of the New York Times in 1994. She wrote this, Mr. Blobby's rise to stardom has provoked anguished commentaries about just what he stands for. Some commentators have called him a metaphor for a nation gone soft in the head. Others have seen him as proof of Britain's deep seated attraction to trash. Easy there Elizabeth, although I have to say, right? <laughs> Okay, I guess he is kind of demonic and I don't know what's happening, but I am somewhat here for Mrs. Blobby's headscarf. What a fashionista. I want to hear more from her. Do you? I think you do. Blobby! Blob, 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 blobby! Blob, 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 blob! <laughs> Mr. Blobby, I don't understand. Does anyone else understand? Please let me know. Seriously though, honestly, who is paying for all of my therapy after these most amazing top 10 videos? This was very nearly too much for me. Do let me know what you think the scariest of the kids TV shows was on the list and what was the weirdest or maybe they're the same. Thank you guys for watching this episode of most amazing top 10. I feel like I have gone legitimately mental, but I'm filming this on a Friday and now I can leave. And I really hope that none of these weird, weird, crazy kids shows follow me in my brain home over the weekend, although I know they will. Send help, send help. Please like this video, share it with a friend. Let's not make a part three, right? Right? Bye.